I'm going to show you guys how to get started on the carnivore diet using your local supermarket. So the carnivore diet usually achieves one thing for most people and that is the removal of inflammatory foods. What I achieve on my version of the carnivore diet is also the increase in nutrient density. So not only are we going to try to reduce the amount of omega-6 meats like pork and chicken, we're going to isolate fat soluble vitamins A, K2, omega-3 fatty acids in order to make sure we are getting the most nutritious diet possible. And two things have to be kept in mind for nutrient density. Food quality is king. What the animal was raised on determines the vitamin content of the food. And two, nose to tail eating encapsulates complete nutrient profile. What that means is that a food like a clam or a mussel or a crab, a tiny food that is the whole animal, is going to contain all the vitamins you need Whereas a ruminant animal like a cow, you have to eat the full organ profile. But we can also achieve this complete nutrient encapsulation with foods like dairy and eggs. So starting with breakfast guys, I know a lot of people like bacon and sausage, but unfortunately, even when you're getting high quality artisanal stuff from someplace like D'Artagnan, it's still pork, it's still high in omega-6. I've seen beef bacon at places like Whole Foods, so definitely keep an eye out for that if you do want to consume bacon. This isn't the end of the world, but why consume bacon every day and increase your omega-6 intake if the whole goal of this diet is to reduce inflammation? You do have things like wild boar sausage. Uh, I've seen this, it's more and more popular lately. Wild boar is much lower in omega-6 if they're not using pork fat in it. So, boar, salt, shallots. So if they don't have any pork fat in it, it just says meat from feral swine. So it seems like this is a pretty safe bet. In regards to getting nutrient density, it's gonna be higher in nutrients, and it's also going to be lower in omega-6. So this is a great choice for breakfast if you absolutely have to have sausage or bacon, as well as the beef bacon. This is probably a more nutrient dense alternative than the beef bacon, but at the end of the day, the main goal for bacon or sausage is the removal of omega-6. This is kind of off topic, but there's some, I was gonna to touch on bone broth later, uh, but there is some bone broth here. Filtered water, organic beef, organic carrots. Uh, the main problem with bone broth is the pollution, the histamines, it's packaged. It's not really a source of nutrients, it's more just something for flavor. I have a whole video on bone broth if you guys want to hear about that. So beef tends to be the highest quality meat that most people have access to in their supermarket as pork and chicken are high in omega-6 and the way that beef is affected by grain feeding isn't nearly as negative. Uh, my supermarket usually carries grass-fed beef at very affordable prices. Uh, this is grass-fed whole beef tenderloin for $7.99 a pound. So this is from Australia on sale. It does go down to $7.99 a pound. Uh, pretty affordable filet mignon, $8 a pound. Can't really beat that, grass-fed. Very lean though, so we would definitely need some fat with this. My supermarket does sell bone marrow, and it's very cheap and affordable, but unfortunately, uh, if we bought this bone marrow, it probably wouldn't be edible. Uh, the grain-fed bone marrow tends to be very, very low quality, and it tastes very poor. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you do ask your butcher for bone marrow, don't buy a lot of it, just try a little bit. Next to this is some liver, and I've seen liver cheap, but I've never seen 149 a pound. And this is great because we only really have to consume about half a pound of liver a week for our vitamin A. And although this is grain-fed liver, we're still achieving our vitamin A intake. So although it is ideal to get grass-fed liver and higher quality stuff, if this is all you have access to, this is great. Just have half a pound once a week, get your vitamin A in, and don't be too concerned about the negative pollution aspects of it. I don't see calves liver today, but sometimes they have calves liver, and that tends to be a little better quality. You know, the animal is younger, it wasn't fed poison longer periods of time. So here we have some racks of lamb, and these are great. Uh, they're pretty fatty. They have enough of a fat cap to really be your only meal. Uh, $10.99 a pound, not too expensive. And my uh, supermarket also sells like shoulder cut lamb chops, grass fed for $5.99 a pound. So again, very fatty, very high quality, very affordable grass fed meat. Uh, I know a lot of you guys don't have access to this stuff, but it's not unheard of. And if you don't see stuff on the shelf, guys, you can always ask your butcher if they have it, if it's available. You know, for me, the tenderloin, the fatty lamb, all of these things would be great choices for the bulk of our protein and a large majority of our fat calories. So now that we have that down, let's see what other meat we have 
access to. Uh, here's the calves liver that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is five ninety nine a pound. Uh, a little bit more expensive, but. Uh, it's definitely worth paying more for the higher quality product in this case, especially if your only source of nutrients is the liver for vitamin A. Over here we have some grass-fed ribeye steaks, $10 a pound. I've seen these on sale for $7.99 a pound. I will also put in a clip the other day I had of ones that had more marbling. Uh, to me, this is great. Uh, this is really tasty, decent quality stuff. Uh, it is probably previously frozen, but that's not the end of the world. So, uh, grass fed ribeye steaks, $9.99 a pound, uh, affordable for most people. Uh, the only thing really missing here would be uh, the nutrients. This can be the bulk of our fat and protein calories. Oh man, look at this. This is crazy. This happens once in a while. This is ribeye from Australia. $9.99 a pound grass fed. I would obviously pick these up if I didn't have so much fresh grass fed. Oh, I'm so tempted to buy these, even though I absolutely do not need them. Oh my God, once in a while you get some really nice uh, grass fed stuff in the supermarket. So if you are intolerant to eggs or dairy, which we will touch on later, the only real way to get your fat calories is from animal products. So I asked the butchers if they trimmed the lamb fat here, and these guys sold me lamb fat for like $1.50 a pound. So I got high quality grass fed fat for pretty much dirt cheap. Uh, the ability to get most of your calories from a non-inflammatory source of fat is very important for most people. Of course you kind of want to go around to all your local supermarkets and see what meat they have access to but it doesn't get a lot better than this. Uh, I know a lot of the meat here is likely frozen and they do have a pretty good grass fed selection uh, but you could definitely do better. You know this meat is grass fed but it's not the best quality. You know, it's shipped over from Australia, um, there's pros and cons to everything, but, um, you know, for fresh meat, unfortunately, you know, we're not really looking at anything besides beef, and if they do have grass-fed options like lamb and beef, then we can explore those. So we didn't really touch on chicken or pork, but, you know, I've been mentioning chicken, very high in omega-6. If you have to have chicken, chicken breast, I guess, isn't the worst, but you do want to be concerned about the antibiotics and the negative things in the chicken. Same thing with the pork. Pork chicken, always good to avoid. Same thing with turkey, high omega-6 meats, not good. Of course, there's always a bunch of like stuff like meats with a lot of sauces added, really, really low quality sausages, other things. Again, all of this is made from very low quality meat and generally not things we want. There's generally not a lot of good stuff in the frozen section. You know, Cornish hen, young goose, Oh, I'm tempted to try goose. Unfortunately, all of this stuff tends to be grain fed. Uh, even the burgers, the burgers sometimes have additives in it. I mean, this is 100% USDA choice chuck, so this is actually seems like a decent idea. So guys, definitely always check the ingredients on any of these frozen hamburgers if you wanna buy them, but uh, you know, I don't really trust them. The deli meats usually have the inherent problem that the initial meat quality isn't that great. It tends to be high in omega-6. Uh, occasionally, there might be a product like prosciutto di parma or iberico ham. That's a very regulated product that is made from quality stuff. I don't know if you guys see right here, that's a leg of prosciutto di parma. So always ask if the prosciutto is from parma. That will ensure it's slightly higher quality, but still it might just be a generic uh, knockoff prosciutto that's not too good. Uh, there's another charcuterie section, the prosciutto di parma. You know, since it is a DOP designation of protection from Parma, the meat is higher quality, but you know, although it's better than a lot of other things, that's not to say it's still not high in omega-6. Uh, same thing with the cheese. The problem with the cheese is, you know, is the milk grass-fed, is the milk grain-fed, is it raw? And we realistically want high quality raw cheeses. You know, and although cured meats are usually an issue, uh, imported prosciutto, the higher quality stuff I've noticed tastes better. I mean, this isn't the best, but it's definitely better than a lot of domestic stuff. And, and the main thing we want to see on the cheese, guys, is raw milk. So here we have a raw cow's milk Comte. The only ingredients are cheese cultures, salt, and animal rennet. This is excellent. This means that the cheese has all of the fat-soluble vitamins. It means it has beneficial bacteria. This is wh exactly what we're looking for. Oh, look at this. Foie gras mousse. So pâtés and mousses are definitely something that 
is available in some supermarkets. So this is actually interesting. I've actually never had an opportunity to buy this in a supermarket. So, hey, you guys don't want to eat the beef liver, buy some foie gras pâté or some liver pâté for your vitamin A. Uh, definitely an interesting option I didn't really think of that I was going to see coming in here today. Um, obviously, I mean, 20 bucks, not exactly the cheapest option. Duck foie gras, water, salt, turn, wine, salt, sugar, pepper. So, yeah, I mean, decent carbohydrate content, uh, especially in the context of a carnivore diet. Uh, Sauternes is a sweet wine from the Bordeaux region of France. Uh, I'm actually tempted to buy this. I mean, I don't, it's Ohio Omega-6, but uh, it's definitely a way to achieve some nutrient density. And this is definitely something I would sacrifice the Omega-6 for. Uh, the majority of these cheeses will not be raw. Uh, you kind of have to keep an eye out for certain brands. Uh, the other brand to look for is Parmigiano Reggiano. So Parmigiano Reggiano is another DOP, which means a designation of protection, which means it needs to be made in a certain way from certain cows and aged for a certain period of time. Parmigiano Reggiano is always raw cow's milk. And if you look on the outside of the wheel of cheese, it's going to say DOP, DOP, Parmigiano. It's going to have these like perforated dots, so you can always tell Parmigiano Reggiano DOP cheese from the specific pattern on the rind. This is usually a very affordable and nutrient dense cheese. So in regards to what most people have access to, this might be their best bet. Of course, there's a ton of other cheeses. Unfortunately, as I said, most of them are not raw. Uh, even the Kerrygold stuff, guys, I'm sorry, but it is not raw cheese. So we have achieved our vitamin A intake from liver. Liver also has a lot of all the other vitamins, C, E, some K2, but mainly vitamin A and large amounts of copper as well as the minerals and elements. The cheese achieves a rounded fat soluble vitamin content if it is raw and grass fed. And cheese is also going to be a main source of K2 in a lot of people's diets. Now, if you don't have access to raw cheese, consuming pasteurized dairy is not, as I said, the end of the world, but it really, it can be inflammatory for some people. So not only does heating the dairy reduce the nutrient content, it can also compromise the bacterial profile. It can make it worse for some people. So bear that in mind. Some people that can tolerate raw cheese can't really tolerate other cheeses as well. And if we don't have raw cheese for a source of K2, we need to either use eggs or other fermented animal foods. So unfortunately, it's really late and they don't have any fresh seafood out, but most of this is pre-frozen anyway. Uh, the best options at the seafood counter are anything alive, so whether it's mollusks like clams or mussels or oysters, also things like lobsters and crab. Uh, this stuff can be a little bit on the expensive side, but you know, once or twice a month it's definitely a great way to get nutrient density. The fattiness of the fish determines how much nutrients it's essentially going to have. That's, you know, that's why they're called fat soluble vitamins. So if you're looking to get a lot of DHA, omega-3s, things like crab and lobster are very fatty and great sources of that. Uh, the clams, oysters, mussels are decent sources too. Uh, below that are probably the wild caught small ocean fish like herring, mackerel, anchovies, sardines. Those are great, although they are pre-frozen. They're incredibly fatty, low on the food chain, low levels of pollution. Salmon is a very touchy one. Wild salmon, when it's in season and fresh, is usually pretty expensive and also not necessarily, uh, not necessarily too high in fat. Uh, farm salmon is always a no-go. The problem with farmed fish, guys, is it is so toxic and polluted that you literally don't want to eat it. Uh, whereas grain-fed beef versus grass-fed beef, the grain-fed beef does have negative things in it, such as antibiotics, how the animals were treated. But, you know, I had a pound of farm salmon the other month and I felt like I was going to die. Uh, there also tends to be some smoked fish products. Uh, again, the initial quality of the seafood is important. It's important that it's wild caught, like this Atlantic salmon is definitely not. Uh, we do have some trout here, smoked trout, likely wild caught. And the ingredients usually are going to be salt, cane sugar, and hardwood smoke. That's about as good as you're going to get. So that's really what you're looking for. This stuff is good for on the go. It's usually a little too expensive to eat every day. Uh, they also have more smoked salmon here. But, you know, this wild Alaskan sockeye salmon, it's an example of something that's good to have. But look, $17.99 for half a pound. Super expensive. Sockeye salmon, salt, brown sugar, natural wood smoke. That's about as good as it's going to get. Uh, again, this is something that's good to have on the go if you're in a hotel room, if you can't cook. And even if you can't cook, if you do raw carnivore, you could still 
uh, have a little leeway here and there. But the main thing to consider for this smoked fish and stuff, I've actually seen cold smoked fish with only salt added. So there is some high quality stuff out there, but you kind of got to pay out your ass for it. Uh, here we have some farm salmon, farm tilapia, definite no goes. Wild caught cod, previously frozen. You know, it's a low fat ocean fish. You know, we don't really know what the pollution is like. So always best to avoid the larger fish if you can. Frozen seafood tends to be a secret in most people's supermarkets. There tends to be a lot of high quality, wild caught, very affordable frozen seafood. The only issue is on the ingredient list, sometimes they use things like sodium polyphosphate to preserve it. So always read the ingredients and make sure that there's no preservatives in it. Uh, the shrimp over there is usually no-go. Shrimp is a bottom feeder. It's low in fat. So not only is it polluted, but it doesn't have a lot of omega-3s. Alaskan pollock, tilapia, um, this Norwegian cod, all the stuff that comes out of Norway is unfortunately heavily, heavily polluted. So, you know, organic Norwegian salmon might seem like a good idea, but, and there's only Norwegian salmon in it, so no preservatives, but if you don't know where this fish comes from, like I do, you don't know how bad it is. Um, and then there's some wild caught cod that's probably a little better, but can still be heavily polluted. Uh, here we have wild caught salmon, unlike the other stuff that was farm raised. And here we have salmon, so only salmon in it, so this is pretty good. Uh, the fat content is a bit low because it is wild salmon, but uh, I don't really have an objection to this. Uh, well, wild caught product of China, I guess I do have an objection to this, never mind. You never know guys with the fish, it's difficult to get good quality fish. That's why I don't eat it too often. And just going back to this preserve stuff over here, uh, the crab meat tends to have preservatives. So, uh, see the sodium, acid, polyphosphate. Um, sometimes they sell this stuff in my local restaurant supply and I get it with just crab meat in it. But again guys, things like crab meat, shellfish, you want to buy it live as high quality as possible. I know you're investing in your health here and although the goal of fish is primarily omega-3s, DHA, it really depends on your budget. I mean, at the end of the day, we could always just supplement all of these things, but the goal here is to do this diet without doing that. Canned seafood is an option that a lot of people only have access to. Uh, the main considerations here are, you know, was it packed in water or was it packed in a high omega-6 oil? Although we talk about shellfish and things like clams being very high on the list, unfortunately, most of the time clams and oysters are packed in things like sunflower oil. So. For the most part, we have to avoid them. And even though glass bottled stuff avoids the negatives associated with can linings, unfortunately, since glass bottled products are usually higher quality and quality needs to taste better, they tend to be packed in olive oil. So that's another negative. Uh, the two good brands that we commonly see are Wild Planet and their ripoff company, Wild Selections. Uh, these, have, these two companies have extensive selections online, but Unfortunately, in most supermarkets, they usually only carry the popular stuff. But guys, as with everything, just read the ingredients on the label. So, you know, here I have King Oscar Kipper snacks, smoked herring fillets, water, salt, sodium phosphate. Um, that's pretty good, although it has the sodium phosphate and we can't avoid that. Um, Kipper snacks are things that taste good and a lot of people like. So it's kind of worth sacrificing that in some cases. Uh, they do have caviar here, but most caviar does have colorings and additives to it although it is a good source of DHA. Uh, products of Iceland wild caught, so you know, you're on the go, you need to get your DHA in, you see this once in a while. Definitely not bad to have even once or twice a week, uh, depending on how much you value the, you know, preservatives and food dyes in this. Yeah, generally we want a, a fatty fish packed in just water, not oil. Crab meat, we tend to see things like citric acid and sodium phosphate as preservatives. Uh, those are the main things we're trying to avoid. See sodium triphosphate, that's not what we want. Canned salmon is something that's good that most people have access to as well. Although the fat can oxidize in the can, uh, we still need to get our fats in. And this is just pink salmon and salt. This is a pretty good option. Uh, this one is a little more expensive. Seven grams of fat, so a better source of fat. But again, only two ingredients, salmon and salt. So this can be an excellent source of omega-3s DHA. Uh, tuna, I don't really touch because it's usually very, very low in fat. It's hard to find a high fat tuna. But most important thing for the canned seafood guys is read the label, 
Uh, follow the principles of the fatty fish, small ocean fish, low pollution levels. Uh, no real excuses to not be able to get your DHA in. Uh, if you don't like fish, eggs are an option. So eggs do contain DHA. They do contain awesome amounts of fat soluble vitamins. Unfortunately, eggs tend to be high in omega-6 because they're always grain fed and they're also fed soy. So there's definitely some concerns about allergic reaction to eggs in that regard. Sashimi is also an option. Uh, this is farm raised salmon and tuna. Not the worst, not the best. Uh, an option if you're like on the go traveling and want something relatively low inflammatory. But again, you know, sushi sashimi isn't necessarily something I would buy in a local supermarket. Uh, it's definitely at the top of the list though in regards to uh, food quality and where you can get your nutrient density from. It's up there with shellfish, it's up there with the raw wild caught fish. Uh, so milk is unfortunately, as most pasteurized dairy, a no-go. Um, you know, this is, you know, even this stuff, organic grass fed, still it's there's the lesser of evils it might have a slightly higher nutrient content um it's still pasteurized it's still homogenized in some cases that means that it's inflammatory when they pasteurize the dairy they remove any beneficial bacteria and they reduce the nutrient content then when they homogenize it uh, it shrinks the fat particles essentially and they can sneak through the gut lining easier making it more inflammatory uh, i was having a consultation with this young lady from canada and in canada they call homogenized milk homo milk. And I was like, it's called homo milk? What do you mean? Isn't that homogenized? And she was like, oh, I don't know. And then she was like, oh, it's Frankie's milk. And I was like, oh my God, I got my clients making in front of me now. What am I gonna do? Um, yo yogurt, unfortunately, we don't have. So yogurt, it's very difficult to find yogurt that is full fat. I think all of these, if you read the label, zero grams of fat like 15 grams of sugar. Outside of butter, unless you're buying animal fat or your meat is very fatty, there's no real pure sources of fat in the supermarket that are as low in inflammation as butter. Of course, I mean, I'm personally allergic to butter. You know, when it's pasteurized, it reduces the nutrient content. Uh, the fats are stabilized and they don't smell rancid, but the fats after being on the shelf for months and months and months can actually be rancid. Uh, you know, since butter is a good source of all the fat soluble vitamins anyway, we're still getting some nutrition from it. If you are allergic to the casein protein in butter, you can clarify your butter, or as we'll take a look at later, you can buy clarified butter already. I remember I used to eat like one of these whole blocks per day with my meals to make sure I got enough fat. And yeah, we could argue that consuming butter if you're mildly allergic to it can cause low level inflammatory reactions and issues for some people, but the reality is your success on this diet is dependent on getting enough fat for optimal energy metabolism, reducing food volume. And if we can't do that, you know, what are we gonna do? It's better to consume a low level inflammatory food temporarily until you can get a better source of it than to just consume too much protein and never adjust to the diet. Uh, so eggs, as we said, very high in omega-6, usually an issue. Quail eggs have a different egg white structure. So if you're allergic to eggs, you might be able to tolerate quail eggs. Asian markets tend to have duck eggs as well. Uh, the free range, pasture raised eggs usually it's just marketing organic same thing it's just organic grain instead of the regular feed that they give them uh, i prefer to go for the flax fed eggs the high omega-3 eggs i don't see those here but you know if you're paying for free range pastured eggs you're hoping that there's a slightly higher vitamin content when you pay for the flax omega-3 eggs at least you're getting some more dha so pastured eggs might have a slightly higher vitamin content. The omega-3, the flax-fed eggs, have a slightly higher DHA content. Both have unfavorable omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, but since eggs are a great source of K2 and vitamin K2 is hard to get in the diet, if you're not consuming eggs or cheese, you're not going to get a considerable amount of them in the diet. Uh, the form of K2 in eggs is different from the one in fermented foods, so ideally you would consume both. But if you do have intolerances to them, then we have to look at, okay, what are other fermented food options or can we increase the overall nutrient content in the diet in general in order to meet our nutrient guidelines. And at the end of the day, we can always still supplement them. I mean, cream cheese, sour cream, all that stuff, I'm sure as you guys can tell, I'm not a fan. So most places do have rotisserie chicken and I mean, I'd honestly rather not eat than eat a rotisserie chicken. I'd rather half starve to death. Um, you know, it is high in omega-6, they probably do brush the outside with things like seasoning, sugar. But on the go, in a hotel room, I guess it's better than nothing for a lot of people. Uh, you know, but a lot of supermarkets do have an awfully large selection of prepared foods now. 
uh, since they are closing soon, they don't have most of the foods out. But you know, some of the foods, like there's some London Royal over here, uh, there's some ribs, but something like London Royal that's just lightly seasoned, like I think this is one of the best things you can get from a prepared perspective. So definitely see if there are any prepared red meat options in your local supermarket. Unfortunately, they do add a lot of stuff to it as with the rotisserie chicken. Uh, we can talk about mustard real quick. So there are brands like, um, this is like one of the lesser evils, water, mustard seed, distilled vinegar, salt, citric acid, sodium metasulfite. The best a mustard can look would just be water, mustard seed, vinegar, and salt. So this is pretty, you know, this is a pretty decent seasoning choice. Uh, so all we, you know, just read the ingredients on the mustard, something like Grey Poupon. Of course, if it's, you know, it's, it's the higher quality brand and it's known for tasting better. But you know they add things like sugar, spices, wine, vinegars, things that can be inflammatory to some people. And don't always just take organic for granted, because even organic, you know, it's going to have ingredients in it that generally are not on the carnivore diet. But um, you know, mustard not the worst thing. Ketchup, unfortunately, almost always has sugar added. I'm not a stickler, guys. I don't think putting ketchup or mustard on your food is going to kill you, but. You, know, you have to keep in mind the palatability. Is it increasing the palatability to an artificial amount where you're consuming more than you should and you're kind of going against your health goals in a way? Oh, we could look at baby food. This is, this is fun. Uh, I mean, what they feed the babies now is absolutely crazy. It's completely sugar. And I remember eating these sweet potatoes when I was a bodybuilder. I love sweet potato baby food, man. I used to love that stuff. Uh, sometimes they do have some, like, meat and... Uh, meat and vegetable dishes, I think. But look, it's all sugar, oh my god, this is ridiculous. I hate going in this aisle, they're really getting kids addicted to sugar early. And it's marketed as a healthy thing too, which it really isn't. I also like mashed potatoes and meatloaf and gravy. I know some places do sell like pureed meat products, so you know, if you're really in a pickle, uh, there might be some sort of pureed meat baby food that you can have from the supermarket if you're traveling. One thing we can do is if you don't have nutrient density, if you can't find liver, if you can't find fish, if you can't find certain things, you know, supplements are an alternative and they do have supplements in a lot of supermarkets now. So, you know, you can get your fish oil, you can get your cod liver oil, you can get certain things if you're unable to find the food version. So water is an important part of every diet and for anyone that doesn't have water testing done at their house or water filter, you know, there are great options. I mean, here, if we look at sparkling smeraldina, we generally want a glass bottled water that has a pretty low mineral content. Um, this looks decent. I don't know where this is from. I've actually never heard of this before. Uh, Gerol Steiner, the problem with this is this has a high calcium content and high mineral content and calcium in water can cause gut dysbiosis in some people, uh, especially with candida and SIBO. So definitely avoid mineral water if you do have those issues. This looks good. What's in this? Gerol Steiner, apple juice with natural water, ooh. My Perrier, uh, not the best quality to my understanding. Um, to me, where is this from? I mean, I would probably go with this one today if I had to. It seems like it has a pretty low mineral content. It's glass bottled, it's from Italy, decent. Uh, Pellegrino, eh, hit or miss. Voss, usually too expensive. The distilled water, I'm not a fan of stuff in plastic, but it's better than drinking stuff out of your tap. Distilled water, reverse osmosis is always good. Generally speaking, I only add salt to my food, and once you start adding a lot of spices, seasonings, marinades, that's where you can kind of compromise the main goal of the carnivore diet of removing inflammation. Because if you add three, four, five different spices, that's technically three, four, five different foods that could each be individually causing some sort of low level inflammatory reaction in your body. Uh, but this is all up to, to you guys and your personal tolerance. Uh, obviously, you know, your sea salt is your go-to for seasoning. These are two of my favorite brands I see in a lot of supermarkets. Uh, black pepper can be inflammatory, but I use this from time to time. Organic black pepper from Italy. And then they have the organic Mediterranean sea salt. I will be doing a video on salt this week, so stay tuned for that. Um, these salts like new salt, uh, low salt, the potassium stuff, I would stay away from. I don't like using that. Uh, pink salt, Himalayan salt. Uh, pink salt and rock salts are higher in calcium, whereas Celtic and sea salts are higher in magnesium, and I tend to like opting for the magnesium options, but definitely a decent amount to explore in regards to salt. 
Uh, not so much seasoning if you want to be relatively strict on the diet. Uh, I do like things like uh, balsamic of Maldana is another DOP. I know you guys are hearing me say this word a lot, but this means balsamic vinegar has to be made in Maldana in a certain way. And there's a very expensive version of this that's like, like over $80 for a small bottle. It's almost like an acidic, sweet glaze. Really delicious on steak. Definitely not carnivore zero carb, but something good for a birthday, special occasion. Um, now all of these oils, plant-based oils, are things we avoid on the carnivore diet. No real exceptions here. You know, we're working so hard to remove omega-6. Why would we cook with olive oil? Why would we risk any inflammatory reactions from a plant-based oil like coconut oil as well? Now, is any of this safe to consume raw? I would personally probably consume egg yolks raw, the cheese, of course, I would do raw. Even that frozen grass-fed meat from Australia, I would probably do raw. So this depends on how confident you are in these products. I'm perfectly fine with that. Although this isn't like a carnivore diet on the go video, it, it's very evident that almost all of these foods can be consumed in their raw state without preparation. Uh, so definitely one interesting thing here from a traveling perspective. And again, guys, don't be afraid to speak to your butcher, speak to your supermarket manager, see what foods they could get you. Um, I mean, I don't really want to talk about plant foods and things like plantains and sweet potatoes and stuff that I deem to be reasonable. So we've found sources of food for every single meal that have relatively low omega-6 content. We have a source of vitamin A in either beef liver, calves liver, or foie gras pâté. We have sources of vitamin K2 in eggs, in cheese, and also in any high quality animal food we purchase, whether it's wild caught fish or grass fed beef. And the omega-3 is predominantly coming from wild caught fish or omega-3 eggs if we consume them. Uh, the body can also convert precursor linoleic and linolenic acids in high quality grass fed meats into omega-3 fatty acids. So the nutrient profile is pretty easily achieved. The only thing to consider here is how much are we spending on achieving this nutrient profile? Approximately $150 to $200 per week. Now, most people do spend about this much on food in general if you factor in them going out to eat. So people spending this much money on just groceries, some are not comfortable doing that. I do have a carnivore diet on a budget video you can check out and you can kind of get your budget down to maybe $200, $220 per month if you only buy ground beef and use supplements. But the quality of that diet and you know the effect it has on you in the long run to me, it's just not worth my health. I'd rather kill myself and work an extra two or three days a week and be able to buy the quality food that I know is going to give me health and make me feel good and taste better. One other thing to mention is exploring all your local options. Different supermarkets have different foods. Of course, you have butchers that have different qualities of meat. Asian markets might have more fish and unique products. You might have an Indian market that sells clarified butter. You might have a Mexican market that sells a particular type of meat product that you like. Uh, we didn't really look at pork rinds or other products like that, but I'm sure you guys know I'm not a fan of anything processed. And uh, you know, I go to a local farm and I buy all my meat. So this is a great stepping stone. This is like, I want to start the carnivore diet tomorrow. What can I do? Uh, and then at that point, you can then decide, okay, do I want to go to local restaurant suppliers? Do I want to explore farmer's markets? Do I want to contact meat purveyors? How do I want to further my food quality and the nutrients that I have access to? I'll put some links in the comments for you guys. Uh, realmilk.com is a great way to find local, high quality, raw grass-fed dairy. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share the video if you can. On my Amazon shop down below, I also have some canned cod liver. Uh, you could find that stuff at like a local Polish or Russian grocer. Uh, but if you can't, that is also a nutrient-dense option. Uh, canned cod liver has vitamin A, vitamin K2, omega-3, literally every single thing you need for the most part. Uh, in addition to that, on my website, frank stefanocom I do have some aluminum-free deodorant, fluoride-free tooth powder, just minimal ingredient, quality hygiene products. Above all, guys, please follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. I'm doing live streams on Instagram every day this week. So if you do have questions, uh, definitely try to tune into my live streams. If not, Patreon is the best way to get personalized questions answered uh, without a consultation. If you guys do want help with increasing the nutrient content of your diet, sourcing food, 
uh, you can reach out to me via email, frankatefano at gmail.com, or contact me through the form on my website.